Hey everybody, and welcome to another JASP tutorial. Uh, in this episode, I just wanted to really quickly share with you a an awesome little feature of the program, because this is not something that you generally will spot when you first open the program to start, you know, looking through your data and doing sorts of uh, all sorts of of different analyses. Before we get started, I just want to remind everyone that uh, I am using currently the most recent preview build, which is uh, JASP 0.12.2. And um, in today's episode, I'm going to show you how to use the distributions function of JASP, which I think is an amazing little uh, little uh, little thing. And how you find it is by clicking on the plus sign over here in this co top corner. You can see I have all of these modules open. So generally speaking, when you first open JASP, you have these six to the right. Uh, and, and you have the hamburger menu here. But then you have these six modules to the right. And you can see that I have a bunch of additional modules. And that's because I clicked over here and I just checked all of them and so you can see that when i click on audit it is there and then it's not there so let's open up a uh, data file and look at the distributions function okay so this data set was the one i used in a previous episode uh where i talked about uh, dis uh, binomial distributions and the binomial test. Okay, so here I have the data, and it, honestly, it's it's not really anything that uh, we should spend any time on. But what I wanted to do is uh, show you how to uh, use the distributions function, and this is really great. Now, distributions only available when you have a data set open. Okay, but it could potentially help with the statistics questions that you get when you're learning statistics. So how do you do a, uh, how do you uh, draw a Z curve or um, find values with the Z or the T or the F? And we can kind of input stuff, uh, input information in this to help us uh, make our uh, decisions. So what I want to do is I just want to go into the normal distribution function and you can see here that it does a normal distribution now the cool thing is is you uh, have a uh, a data set open but that doesn't mean you have to use the data set here I mean you can but really what I want to do is just focus on the show distribution so we're not even gonna use the data in this because I honestly just want to show you that um, all we have to do is change various things and it will change the density. And so this is a teaching and learning tool that I think would be really useful if you are a student of statistics at any level. But I mean, obviously, I'm showing you the normal distribution, but you have T and you have F. Um, I go back here. You have chi squared. You have beta, gamma, inverse, gamma, exponential. You can also do discrete functions like Bernoulli, I mentioned a binomial before, negative binomial, okay, and then the Poisson uh, distribution, right? So we have all of these distributions, and yes, you can apply these functionalities to your existing data set that you have open in, ja in JASP, but what I really want to focus on is this right here and how if we change certain things, we can get a better look at uh, the normal distribution. And so here you have the normal, normal distribution where the mean is at zero and the um, variance is at one, right? And so we have the parameters here, or I should say this is mu, which is the population mean, zero, and then um, sigma squared, which is the... Um, variance of the population, right? But we can also change where we have 
uh, mu and sigma, which would be then the population standard deviation. Now, again, if you are trying to, uh, if you are learning Z distributions and Z tests, this might actually really help because then we can, uh, and then you have mu and tau and then mu and uh, uh, kappa, I guess that's what, that's what that is. Um, I'm, I'm really only familiar with these three. So if we change the way, uh, let's see, if we go, if we change to just, um, there we go. There's my, uh, I mean, it looks literally the same because the square root of one is one. So the standard deviation and variance on that normal curve was the same thing, right? So uh, imagine back, uh, or if you're currently in, uh, undergraduate statistics you had these and you had to do them okay and so if we change this to oh i don't know a five and then we change this to 15 for example right and we'll get a normal curve here that doesn't really get expressed on this graph because it get it's getting cut off right because we we're changing the range here so if we change uh, of course this is not great <laughs> five and fifteen uh, five and oh, let's go back to one. Let's see what happens there. That's right, because five is not represented on this graph. So if we did 10 to negative 10, oops, that's 310, 10. Okay, you can see here that there's my normal curve. And of course, it's asymptoting down there all the way down to negative 10, right? But we can change the the plot, and we can and we can. I'm gonna go back to zero and one, just because it's easier. Oops, zero and one, not zero and zero. <laughs> okay, so I mean, I I'm not gonna change the range back again. But here you can um, choose different things to display, which I think is great. So you can ex uh, look at the exploratory text. So the uh, information where this come comes from so uh uh blitzstein and, and huang introduction to pr uh, probability and lemus and pasipathy uh the ties that bind in the journal significance right and so a lot of this information um ties to this right and so it says this demonstration is divided into four parts Really, I'm just talking about the first part here because then you can just see whether or not your data is normal or not by going down and assessing the fit. We're not going through that. I, I just thought this was amazing to sort of help with um, learning the curves, right, and learning the different kinds of distributions. Other things that we can add to this, right, so we can parameter support and moments okay so that's if you are if you remember your uh statistics lingo here we have the estimate of x equals mu and the variance of x is sigma squared okay and then you can draw the cumulative distri distribution function here right and then we're so this is the cumulative probability plot right which is different from the density plot and then you can also uh, bring up the quartile function. See, there we go. There's the quartile plot. Okay. And so probability of X is now on the X axis. And then the last thing that I wanted to share is I'm going to change my range back to negative um, three and three. And that is because what I want to show you. Um, yeah, negative three to three. There we go. Updated is um, this last highlight feature here where I can highlight the density or the probability. And so you have here density as a proportion out of one, okay? And so I can click on the density and it will give me for, for any interval that I uh, create here. So from zero to one, we go from 0.4 to 0.24, okay? And then down here, we get the cumulative probability slopes these slope values equal the number that they hit on the density because this is x by the probability of x and this is the quartile plot 
X and probability of X, and it doesn't look like it draws anything there. Okay, so I think that's pretty cool. And then you could also do probability. So it will change the plots to reflect the probability. So if you are familiar with your percentages um, of densities, okay, 34% of all of the scores for X, all of the people exist for X values, 34% from between zero and one. And then if we added another uh, negative one to one, so I could, if I change this negative one to one, it will do 0.68. Okay, so within one standard deviation of the mean, you have 68% of the people and that density is 0.24. And then that is reflected down here where we have 0.68. I think it's just an amazing tool. It puts it all right in front of you. Uh, I wish I kind of had this when I was doing undergraduate statistics. It would be amazing. And so that's going to do it for this episode. Just how you mess around with the distribution first step. You can do this again in T, F, chi-squared, all of it. You can sort of take a look at what happens when you change degrees of freedom in T and F. It's, pretty, it's a pretty cool feature. Leave your comments and feedback down below. Uh, if you could leave a like and subscribe to the channel, that would be great. I'll keep making these if you keep asking for them. Thanks again for watching.